Alright guys, in the previous tutorial we made this outline pumpkin icon and from the outline icon we made a fill icon and in this tutorial we will turn the outline icon into a cartoonish illustration with adding some extra elements, base color, shadows and highlights. So let's begin. Since this will be illustration and not an icon, we need to decrease the stroke in order to leave more space for the details. I will decrease twice the size, so it's 20 points and I will make it to 10 points. For the details we will be adding a line into the middle of the handle, so it can look more 3D. We will be also adding a swirl on the side of the handle and sun rays behind the pumpkin. To do that we will be using the pen tool. Since we will be using the pen tool, we need to remove the fill and leave it only to stroke. Let's zoom in. Hit Ctrl plus Y to enter outline mode so we can see the lines better. We can add an anchor point here into the middle of the pumpkin and add one more anchor point where the line curves. But don't let go the left click and curve it. See how I'm curving it to it gets to a proper direction. Try to do the same so it can look more natural. Now with pressing Ctrl plus Y we will leave the outline mode and zoom out. Alright, let's start drawing a spiral. I will create an anchor point inside of the handle so I can have more room for the curve. Just do a curve like I do. Click, hold and curve. Alright, uh, yours doesn't have to be the same. So again, don't stress about it. Mine looks fine, but I see a fill on the spiral. I don't know why. I will just turn off the fill and grab the width tool. I will increase the left part of the spiral. Okay. I see the edges are not rounded. I will also make them rounded. And with the direct selection tool, I will just edit the spiral a bit. Just pull the anchor points up, down, however you feel it. You can also play with these handles. Alright, looks perfect. We need to draw one more swirl below, but instead of redrawing it, I will just copy the original swirl and place it below the current one. And I will hit Ctrl plus Y so I can see better what I'm doing here. I will also edit it with the direct selection tool. I think if I put it here it will look better. Yeah, definitely. Now let's expand the stroke and convert it to fill. Just select the two swirls. Go to object and expand appearance and hit the unite on the pathfinder. On the spurs I see a like a not rounded path. Uh, to be honest looks better this way uh, but I want to show you how to convert this one into a rounded. Uh, I have to grab the pen tool and just put a anchor point here and here and just curve it to the natural path. And it's okay if the pen tool is set to fill because we are only creating a shape and then with that shape we will cut the sphero. Okay, we did the shape. Now select both and hit the minus front. I don't like the thickness of the swirls, so I will make them thinner by increasing the stroke. I know it sounds weird, but trust me. Then go to expand and hit the minus front. Uh, instead of putting the spur behind the pumpkin, I will just grab the handle, copy it, unselect everything, select the swirl and paste it with Ctrl plus F and just select both and use the minus front. 
I do this because uh, I see the sprues in the right position and I don't like extra elements behind it and I want to keep a clean armor that's why I did this instead of just putting the sprue behind the handle alright we are done with the sprue now we can add a sun rays behind the pumpkin first let's group the pumpkin now with the eyedropper tool I will just select the pumpkin so I can copy the same stroke option uh, 10 pixel stroke and the rounded cup and remove the fill now we can draw a vertical line into the middle of the pumpkin ok align it go to object transform rotate set the angle to 50% don't know why this is not working just move it and hit ctrl plus z and do it again okay working fine so now just hit copy and hit ctrl plus d multiple times so you can create a copy in the same order now let's group the rays i will select everything and with holding shift and clicking on the pumpkin i will unselect now let's copy the rays with ctrl plus c then ctrl plus f rotate them between the original copy scale it down select both group and right tick arrange and send to back just set the position scale them okay they look fine what I do not like is the swirls are touching the rays and they are losing visual we need to fix that so I will just copy the pumpkin ctrl plus c then ctrl plus f go to object expand it hit unite we have two shapes we need to make this one bigger so go to object path offset path ok 50 pixels looks good alright so I forgot to expand the rays we need to expand the rays and just hit unite select the second copy and hit the minus prompt and there we have it delete these extra lines at the bottom I will make the rays like interrupted so we can give more characteristic of the rays let's zoom in choose the erase tool just delete this trace like this with the drag selection tool and make this rounded. Let's do the same to all the arrays. Here, unfortunately, I can't make them rounded. So I will zoom in and tell you what is the problem here. Uh, we have like a. Let me unround it. We have an extra anchor point here who is not letting us to do it round. The direct selection tool will just move that anchor point into the middle and there we have it. I will just speed up this part because I'm doing the same thing on all the rays. Ok, was my mistake by making the rays same thickness as the pumpkin, I think if they are thinner it will look a lot better, so to do that we will just ungroup them, then hold alt and hit the unite on the pathfinder and you should see expand button, just click on it, I will increase the stroke, now we need to expand it, but wait before we are expanding it I will make the stroke white so I can see how thin they will be ok they look fine and I'll, I'll expand them and hit the minus front on the pathfinder our shapes looks ready to add some color I just see some details here I don't like it I'll remove it alright so to do a color first we need to expand everything so just grab the pumpkin Go to object, 
and expand the stroke. Now we need to separate the stroke from the fill. Maybe they look separate, but they are not. So let me just grab this object. Change the color of it. And if you see, somehow the fill is inside the stroke. So if you like to separate them, we have to select both and hit trim on the pathfinder. And now the stroke is no longer top on the fill. Okay, let's do this to the pumpkin. Just select the pumpkin and hit trim. The last step before coloring, we need to make the stroke as one object. So with the magic wand, we will select the black color and just hit unite on the pathfinder. So now everything which is black is one shape, only the white fill is separated. Alright, so with holding shift I will select every element on the pumpkin and change this to orange. The handle can be green. Alright, we can grab again the magic one and select the black color. It's good if we put some orange drop into that color it gives more aesthetics to it so with the eyedropper we just copy this color and make this way darker almost black okay we are done with the basic color now let's add some shadows and highlights first let's ungroup everything now for the shadow we will need two more copies one copy will be the shadow, the other copy will be a shape which we will be cutting that shadow. In order to make two copies, I will hit Ctrl plus C, then hit Ctrl plus F twice. Scale the bottom copy with holding shift and now we will just change this bottom copy a bit darker. Now let's play around with this shape we will be using to cut this shadow just increase it pull it down okay select both and use the minus front for the highlights i will just select the main shape go to object path and select offset path we need to put a minus here because we want to shrink it and minus 10 is too low and minus 20 is perfect make this lighter all right just scaling down with holding shift away from the shadow i'll do one more highlight i'll copy this one with ctrl plus c then ctrl plus f Instead of the offset pad, I will just hold out and shift and pull it down. I will create one more copy with holding out and shift and pulling it down. Now select both and hit the minus front. Let's make this even lighter. Uh, if you get confused with all this copy and pasting, I suggest you watch my hot dog video where I explain better how I do the highlights and shadows. Here I will do the same, make two copies pull the top copy up and just let me change this color so you can see better what I'm doing okay perfect use the minus front ungroup it and delete this extra part over here for the highlights I will just use an offset pad on the main color I'm using a shortcut by the way a custom made shortcut change this highlights color and I will cut this highlights with this shadow I'm just making one copy of the shadow so I can cut that highlights and pulling the top copy 
a bit up and just rotate this to have that natural direction select both and minus front delete this extra part now i will be using the offset part again but this time i will cut it with the pen tool I will just create a shape where I want this object to be deleted. Okay. Now for the last shape, I'll do the same, make two copies and with the other copy I will cut the shadow, delete the extra part, make a high glass here with the offset part. Since this is a smaller object, I will be doing a minus 5 points instead of minus 10. If you notice the middle had minus 20, the second one minus 10 and this one minus 5. Okay, again copying this shadow so I can cut these highlights. So let's do one more highlights. Again, I will be using the pen tool, but this time I will zoom in because it's a smaller space. I'm just creating that shape which I want to cut the highlights. Instead of drawing highlights and shadow to the other side, I will just select this one with holding Alt and Shift. I will move it on the right, right click on it, transform and reflect. Make sure this is 90% and just place it on the other half. I'm just zooming in here. Okay, I did a good job. No need for adjustments. Now we can do some shadows and highlights to the handle. So, same thing here. Just copy it twice, Ctrl plus C, and then twice, Ctrl plus F. Move the copy on the right, select both, use the minus front, and make this lighter green. I'll delete this extra part. Now let's make this lower part darker. And instead of using the minus front, I will be using the intersect. But since I will be using the intersect, I will just cover the part where I want the shadow to be. Then I will select both and use the intersect on the pathfinder. I will also add a shadow below with the pen tool. Now let's hit Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus F to make a copy. Make this darker. Here I don't like to make a curve, I like to go straight, so I must click on that anchor point in order to cut it and go in a straight line. I will do the same here. It's your choice if you wanted to cut it with the minus front or the intersect, they both do the same job. I'll make this corner surrounded, do the same thing here. Here we can also add a high lens into the middle of the handle but first I will select the solid color and the high lens and hit trim on the pathfinder. We we'll just do an offset pot and make this lighter green. Alright guys, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, the next video will be turning that outline icon into a vintage illustration style.